The UEFA Champions League semifinals are less than a week away. So today in the Fine Margins YouTube channel, we're going to be previewing Manchester City against Real Madrid. But head over to our main channel page to also see our preview out now for AC Milan against Inter Milan. But with that, let's get right into our video. Make sure to drop a like if you find yourself enjoying and subscribe to the channel to show your support. You guys may remember Adrian at Drunken Goon on Twitter from our World Cup streams. He's back here to preview the UEFA Champions League semifinals. First of all, in this video, as I said, we're going to be talking about Manchester City against Real Madrid. But Goon, uh, how have you been keeping up with the Champions League this season? Have you been, been enjoying the competition so far? It's uh, It's been great. Uh, a few upsets and uh, a few teams uh, on a mission. So uh, it's uh, it's been good. And we got uh, four quality teams in the semi. So let's uh, let's get to it. Yeah, yeah, I'm excited. Perhaps the more intriguing of the two semifinals here between two of the European powerhouses, a rematch of last year's semifinal, of course, where Real Madrid from basically nothing pulled out two stoppage time goals from Rodrigo and eventually took down Manchester City in added extra time. So uh, let's get into this right away here. Is this Manchester City's tournament to lose at this point? Well, between the two of them, they got 14 Champions Leagues uh, to date. Uh, Man City doesn't have any. Real's got 14. So, uh, of course, uh, history doesn't say that. But uh, based on form and what we've seen, uh, as well as the revenge factor from last year, I think uh, Man City is legit uh, a runaway favorite to to win the ch not just this matchup but uh, the whole competition. And perhaps one of the most informed players in the world up top for Manchester City, Holland in scintillating form, uh, and Manchester City. Clear favorites here, according to the odds makers. I pulled up odds here from Pinnacle to qualify. Manchester City are minus 286, and Real Madrid are plus 230. To win the competition, you're finding Manchester City around minus 150, despite the fact that they have to go through the semifinals. So firm favorites here. But as you said, it is the Champions League pedigree that does come with Real Madrid in particular, and more specifically, Ancelotti. He's managed some of the best rosters best squads ever assembled i look particularly at the ac milan of the mid 2000s from 2005 to 2007 that area legends all over the team never really found domestic success that often but constant european success what do you think it is about ancelotti's managerial style that allows that kind of caters towards these competitions rather than the domestic the league competitions I think it's the, uh, the the big moments, right? Uh, the league is a grind, and uh, as we've seen this week, they don't really care about the league. They've uh, they've rotated their squad in midweek, yeah. even though that means that uh, they might finish behind the rivals Atletico Madrid, not just Barcelona in the league. Uh, so the focus is entirely on uh, on the Champions League at, at Real Madrid. Uh, as we know, they, they've won it many times. Uh, people keep talking about La Decima, and that's like almost 10 years ago. They've added four more since. So it's uh, they they know this is the one they want. This is the big uh, big trophy, and uh, you win this, and uh, uh, your your name goes up in, in the big lights. So what might be helping Real Madrid a little bit there is that squad rotation is a luxury they can afford. Manchester City kind of looks like they have to win every single game. Well, they're still well. They just pulled ahead of Arsenal finally in the league standings, but it took quite a while and to stay there. They're going to have to continue winning. So it's got to be full throttle in the league as well. But let's get into the matchup breakdown here. Uh, specifically, let's talk through the first leg and also maybe to advance. What do you expect to see from this game from both teams? Do you think it's fair that Manchester City are such heavy, heavy favorites? Um, I, I agree that they, they're favorites and uh, it's, uh, it's completely justified. They're informed. They're going for free trophies. Um and they've uh, they have the depth, they have the quality, um, and uh, I mean Pep's just always finding the the weak spot on the opposition and is not afraid to exploit it. We've we've seen it against Arsenal to to embarrass Arsenal like that yeah. uh, just last week. It just shows that they're on top of their game, they're focused, and uh, they're they're just gunning for it all the, the triple. Um, I I wouldn't put it behind Real to to just trip them up. And the way they did it last year, Ancelotti is always finding new uh, new ways to to rediscover players and to uh, shape them into his formation. The the latest thing is done with Kamavinga to put him at left back. Uh, looks like a stroke of genius. He's uh, He was really good against the Barcelona and uh, every game there he's getting more confidence. I know there was talk about getting Alfonso Davies, but the way Kamavinga is playing, uh, they probably don't need a left back in, uh, in the near future. 
Yeah, uh, Kamavinga himself maybe isn't the biggest fan of himself playing in that role, but uh, certainly from watching him play, he is excellent and well-suited to that role. Um, I, I think maybe eventually they get to a point where him and Chua Meni are, are really anchoring the midfield, but he is an excellent tackler, so uh, his defensive efforts are great. Obviously, with the ball, he's excellent as, as well. So... It's hard. I mean, all signs for me point towards this one being City are the clear favorites. They're, like you said, the more informed team. Uh, Pep Guardiola, perhaps, I mean, perhaps the superior manager, although, as I said, Ancelotti seems to have that European pedigree. I still, I still struggle to not want to take Real Madrid at that price around plus 230. Is there any way you expect yourself to take this one on from a betting standpoint to, to get an edge here? Um, I haven't done anything so far with it. Um, looking to get Real, it, it's basically threading the needle. You have to have that that perfect situation for for them to to get the scoring from uh, from the big guy up front. To get the you know uh, they will ha- not have a lot of possession. They will not have a lot of chances. But we know there can be uh, clinical finishing. It has to be perfect, the perfect situation for them to to do it. They did it last year. I don't know if they can uh, catch lightning in a bottle twice in a row. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, go, go ahead, go ahead. If you have anything else, it's 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 a hard hard ask for them to to do it twice in a row. Of course, what happened last year was last year. This is this is a new situation. Uh, but uh, Man City is in such great form that I I can't see them screwing this up. Yeah, uh, I I myself. I do lean towards Man City on this one. Uh, the better squad, more in form. Like I said, maybe the most informed player in the world in Erling Holland, the way he's playing right now. Maybe this is just exactly what City have been missing. You know, you said 14 Champions Leagues combined between them, uh, all 14 being with Real Madrid. Pep Guardiola hasn't won a Champions League with Man City, did not win a Champions League with Bayern Munich, despite assembling some of the greatest squads that we've ever seen. So I, I think certain times... And I think the one in particular that I will go to is the Champions League final where City lost to Chelsea, where Pep Guardiola is criticized for overthinking these things. And uh, obviously City here are the big favorites, but they were favored against Chelsea. And it's just some of the formulas that he used over the course of getting to that Champions League final, he went away from the the difference in utilization of De Bruyne specifically in that final, uh, the best player on that team, maybe not getting the most out of him for those finals. What do you think is is about Pep Guardiola overthinking it? Or at least do you think it's accurate? And if so, what do you think it is about Pep Guardiola in these super big matches where he might be overthinking things sometimes? Uh, it, it's true that he's always trying to innovate. And uh, sometimes when you innovate, uh, you know, not everything's going to come, uh, come up aces. Um, but he's willing to take a chance, and uh, and that's what gets him that edge against most opponents. Um, Ancelotti's got a few years on him and uh, a lot of experience, but uh, uh, there might be surprises both ways here. Um, I just like the way Man City with the inverted uh, wing backs and the their ability to to move the ball, keep the ball, and uh, distribute it, and having the lethal finishing, not just uh, Holland, but uh, also off the bench with Alvarez and. Uh, Mares and like there's there's so many threats on that team. Everybody can can score at any time. They've been getting goals from defense. I mean, it's it's just a juggernaut. Um, the only way I can see Man City screwing this up is if uh, if they they try to to do too much with uh, in possession. And uh, we we've seen uh, their goaltending. It's a great uh, Ederson is a great ball handler uh, with his feet, of course. Uh, but uh, he he sometimes try to do too much uh, to to get that. Uh, attack going and uh you know he's he's been mistake prone the, more so this year than than ever before and uh, if if he does you know have one of those moments it, it might open the door for um, yeah, I, and a year ago we saw Courtois uh in the Champions League final the biggest match really really pull through and, and will his team to victory so uh that, that could definitely be an edge here for Real Madrid in terms of their their goalkeeping where City maybe a bit more mistakes there although I mean, the amount of goals Real Madrid have been leaking constantly in the league as well. I, I mean, we keep on saying we can't really see how Real Madrid can do it, although the pedigree is there 
with this formation for Man City. I still don't really understand the 3 2 4 1 they play. Uh, Stones essentially playing in midfield with Rodri seems to be the way you're going. It, it's kind of really difficult to even put numbers around this formation. It, it's it's so free flowing. And sometimes you have Alvarez in the middle, and he's also playing as a second striker in those certain circumstances. So uh, it, it's really the innovation here by Pep Guardiola has seemed to come through this season. Uh, formation wise, last thing here do you think anything changes for either of these teams that they look to counter anything the other manager is throwing at them? Or do you think they both kind of put out the same sort of lines they have been dealing with over the last few weeks? I say expect the unexpected. <laughs> Uh, there, <laughs> there will be there will be some surprises. Um, I don't know how many more Pep can offer, but uh, the versatility of, of the players he has and their ability to, to play in different positions and interchange during the game, uh, swap wings, and uh, it just gives a lot of matchup problems to the opposition. Um, and um, Grealish ability to to generate uh, set plays is uh, is something that uh, will cause Real some some issues. Yeah, and the like you said, the goals coming from defense as well have been key for City. The recent one against West Ham where Ake broke the deadlock off of a, an excellent set-piece opportunity. So obviously all these things can come into play. City are the massive favorites. Uh, I myself might be looking at Real Madrid in some capacity here just because I, I, I don't know if City should be as heavily favored in this one, but uh, we'll see how all this plays out. On our YouTube channel right now, you can also catch the preview for AC Milan and Inter Milan as well. So make sure you stay on our channel here at Fine Margins and check that one out. We have more content hopefully coming for the rest of the Champions League and hopefully fire up some more soccer content over here at the Hammer Bed Network. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and drop a like, particularly on this one, if you did enjoy. And we'll see you next time for more from the Fine Margins YouTube channel.